Good afternoon, my name is Hazel Owen. Today I'd like to introduce the English Language Learning in New Zealand Blended Learning Programme. A wee bit of a mouthful, so we call it the Ellen's Blended Learning Programme. The Ellen's team was made up of ESOL discipline experts as well as ICT enhanced learning and teaching consultants. The reason it came about was the Ministry of Education, including Janet McQueen and Eddie, identified a need for students, especially those migrating newly to New Zealand, who had a foundation English language and possibly literacy level and, and needed to go into mainstream classes but couldn't, especially in those small schools where there was either no specialist ESOL support or only very part-time ESOL support. The idea was to provide a really flexible learning environment that wouldn't cognitively overload students or have plenty of scaffolding using things like multimedia that would be good for most learning preferences and styles that so had a lot of those aspects built into it and also just gave students a lot of opportunities to revise and practice the language and as well as building a community. The learners themselves are supported in face-to-face -face environment by e-tutors, which could be tutor aides, and an off-site e-teacher. So you might have the e-teacher in Kaitaia and students across the, the country. Although it is built on the existing cluster system, the idea though is that there's central spaces that students share to, to help build that community. The design that underpins this, this uh, mind map kind of shows this, it has both areas for the e-tutors and the e-teachers, as well as the four main topic areas for students and support areas such as the multimedia suite, the e-portfolio area for students and the our cultural village area. This translates in Moodle to look a little bit like this. So you have the student area, you have the teacher area, and yet to be developed is a community, a parents area. The theme here, very much New Zealand, it's the bush, it's tramping, and has both the text here, as well as we've built in audio, so that, you're, that students can practice both reading and listening. Thinking about the professional development that will be required by e-tutors and e-teachers, we've put together both a guide and this area here, where teachers can share their own experiences and ideas, but it can also access resources around the learners they might encounter, some of the resources they could use and how people have already been using them effectively and the nuts and bolts how do I actually use Moodle or Adobe Connect for instance. Behind all of the design is very much sound learning theory so this is Bloom's taxonomy and what it does is if it's fed into the topic is very much within the New Zealand curriculum you have the language learning and other literacy areas looking at the teacher roles the idea is to move from a more teacher-led environment to a student-led environment. This obviously can't be achieved just by saying, OK, here you go, you've joined the programme, now you're going to become student-led. What we wanted to do is over the four modules is give a very sound base in the orientation model, which is more teacher-led, and incrementally reduce the scaffolding and empower the students to become much more student-led. To illustrate this diagram a little more, there are two hypothetical student scenarios here. One is of slightly higher level language speaker and one is of a true foundation level speaker. And the idea is that it takes you through how a student would work their way through something like the Our New Zealand module that we just looked at and how they would overcome challenges, who they would work with. And again, it, it is idealised to a certain extent, but it does give some ideas on how these might be worked through. The notion of pride of where you come from, of background, was very much in, built into the design here. So we've got, this was called some ethnic boxes, it's now called our cultural village area. It's a digital collection of images, information, slides, audio files, 
magazines, and the students can share and celebrate their backgrounds and some of the things that they miss. And I'll give you a little bit of feedback in a moment from one of the students around this particular aspect. The other thing that's been part of the Moodle, which is fantastic, is the glossary. The glossary can actually be built by the students, although at the moment uh, it's been built by the developers. It fits in with the topics that are being specifically uh, studied within Moodle. And if you have an HTML page, students can run the cursor over the word and it will give them the link to the glossary. So once a student clicks into their, their student tent, this is what they would see. This is the animals module. It's divided into learning sequences. If a student clicks on set A, it will take them to this area here. Private messages go straight through to messages for you. This could be from other students or it could be from the teacher. Link to their online synchronous meeting as well as inter interactive exercises they can do and a reflective blog posting area. This gives you an idea of one of the Adobe sessions. So the students have both audio chat and text chat. They've got exercises and activities that they do collaboratively in this area or individually whilst the teacher works closely with one of the students who's maybe um, having some challenges. There's also, you see here, a private area for support for the e-teacher, especially during those first couple of sessions where um, things are a little bit unusual. There were some issues thinking about the rollout of broadband through schools and what this is actually going to mean. There were some problems in the trial that we did with the audio, with time lag, and with if, if we were using Adobe Connect, the whole of the rest of the school not being able to get online. So with broadband, just a, a rhetorical question here, what, how much is it going to empower our learners? What are we going to be doing with it to help our learners? Within the Moodle site as well, we've been linking out to existing activities as well as building them ourselves. And we want to really encourage students to start to develop their own artifacts that can be shared either with their peers at that time or with future cohorts of students. With this one, it's just a simple drag and drop. The students around, they go green when they've got it correct. And there's a dictionary link down here just to check it. This could be done collaboratively in the Adobe session. It could be set up as a two, two groups and it could be competitive or it could just be for fun. But students enjoy these types of things uh, according to their feedback. We're also keen to use a social area for students where they very much were in control. They've got a page of their own, they've got a wall, which is sort of like that Facebook type idea, leave comments for each other and welcomes. So we, we decided to go for Ning. Um, we also wanted students to develop their own e-portfolios and put together an example, which is what you can see here. So they could include videos and voice threads and so on and so forth. So the feedback. Again, thinking, keeping in the back of your mind all the time, the broadband rollout and what it can mean to students and teachers. Students very much were motivated by the environment, but they did find some of it challenging, which is great. If it was too easy, they'd be bored. And it looks from this comment and from other comments like it, that students were scaffolded and supported enough that they felt they could give things a go. Thinking about the Our Cultural Village aspect that I showed earlier, this student in particular was blown away by the Kiribati videos and the songs. And so it really did start to create a community and understanding, so that cross-cultural collaboration and understanding. The e-tutors themselves loved the resources, loved the areas, um, enjoyed interacting within them and uh, obviously recognise that the students were motivated by, by the whole thing. This is perhaps the main reason for continuing with the next stage. We've just done the trial, we're going into the pilot, which will be a slightly bigger thing, and then a final rollout. The reason for the blending learning programmes of this type is, is here. If we look at the second paragraph, a student who had a long history of truanting, with the Allen's program was always first at the door in the morning because he was so keen. He's in his other subjects, he's settling down, he's focused, and he's 
really trying to do the work and his behavior has improved greatly. That's, that's just fantastic. It, it's almost, for, for, forget, the, forget the broadband, forget the tools, look at how much it has meant to this one learner. If we can do this for all of the learners, then it's our job done, really. <laughs> Please do drop me a line um, or any of the rest of the team a line if you've got any questions. Um, be very happy to hear from you and thank you very much for listening.